not in the audience, will be able to say the same. No matter what you have been through, God has been good to you. Come with me this evening to the Word of God, recorded in the book of St. Luke, the third chapter. It is the baptism of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We'd like to lift up those last few verses there, very end, verse 21. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I'm well pleased. I want to talk with you this evening on the subject, I belong to God. The children sing a song that I love so dearly, say, I belong to God from the top of my head to the sole of my feet, I belong to God. I give this title, I belong to God, because if you have been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, then you belong to God. You are a child of God, and God will speak to you today as he spoke to his son. You are my beloved sons and daughters of whom I'm well pleased. If we look at our text for today, John is busy proclaiming the word of God. And the people have great expectation. They're waiting for the Messiah. Jesus John had been crying as the prophet Isaiah say, crying in the wilderness. One who will come make straight the path for the Messiah. So there was great expectation. They were waiting. So much so that they were wondering if maybe John might be the Messiah. Oh, John dare not take that credit. He dare not pretend to be the son of the living God. He said plainly, I'm not he, but there's one coming mightier than I. Just think of it, one who is mightier than I. John was indeed a mighty preacher. Indeed, Jesus said of him that of men born of a woman, there is none greater than John. And John now here says, but there is one coming mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not even able or willing or uh, honored to stoop down to untie. This was the job of a, of a slave to untie the sandals and wash the feet. And John said, I'm not even worthy to do that. He is so great. Who is he? Who is the one? Isaiah asked him that those down through the years asked that question. Uh, the psalmist asked, who is he? He is the mighty one of the living God. John is baptizing, and there he is baptizing. Go, go with me to the Jordan. Go with me there and see the crowd coming, coming to repenting of their sin. And Norton now is John the baptized, talking about Jesus, preaching about Jesus, and all that are certain, Jesus stands in the line. You can imagine the encounter there. Nowhere in Scripture, but besides this point, where it tells us that John and Jesus met. Well, they could have, as they no doubt traveled back and forth every year to Jerusalem to offer sacrifice. But the Scripture says nothing of that. It is only this occasion John and Jesus meet. 
And what a wonderful occasion it is. I can imagine John turning around, looking at Jesus, saying, You in what are you doing here? You need to be baptized. John knew for certain that Jesus was the Messiah. Do we all doubt that Jesus had no sin? John was preaching a sin, repentance of sin. Jesus had no sin to repent. And yet he stands in line to be baptized. What is going on? Uh, Jesus said to him, as no doubt I can you read in Matthew, there, there's a little argument and a tug of war going. And Jesus said, let it be done now. In order that scripture might be fulfilled. Jesus came into this world to fulfill all of the righteousness. Even to the point of taking on our sin. And that is just think of the muddy water of Jordan and those who had gone on leaving their sins there. Jesus going into this water now here to take on the sins of the whole world. Your sins, my sins, and all of them are attached to him as he now began his mission on his way to the cross. The public ministry of Jesus, the coronation of Jesus coming Beginning his public ministry, and now he has started. He is on his way to the cross, and your sins and my sin. Can you imagine if we were able to see all of those sins as a burden upon our Lord and Savior? He marched not the cross that caused him to fall to the ground. It was not that caused him because he is the savior of the world. It was your sins, my sin, that he was marching to old Calvary to take away the sins of the world. Can you hear John out there saying as he preached about this mighty one that will come? Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Now, these people were familiar with Sin being moved, they had offered lambs, they had offered bulls, they had offered, but that was a one-time thing. Jesus came and that was only to take away their sins. But John makes it clear that Jesus comes to take away the the whole world. There he is in the Jordan. And John baptized him. But there's an important point for us to note here and Luke gospel. No other other gospel, all four gospels give the account of Jesus' baptism. But Luke mentions something special here. He says that Jesus is praying. Don't miss that. That is important for us. And it is important for us as we in turn come to be baptized and be connected with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We ought to be praying. Praying for the power of the Holy Spirit to fall afresh on us as it did Jesus. Praying. He was praying. And what happened as he is praying? Scripture tells us in this word, the Greek word here is not just uh, open, but in Isaiah mentioned here again, you know the passage in Isaiah said, Oh, that our Lord would come down. Oh, that he would rent the heavens. In other words, tear it open and come down here. And this is the word here used only two times with the eyes and here that the heaven is rented open. It is used again in the same connection, this Greek word, with the temple when Jesus died on that old rugged cross and they said and the temple was rent, the curtain was rent Rent it ripped from top to bottom. Yes, Jesus is now being baptized. He is baptized and the dove, the dove, John makes mention later on, he says that the Spirit, Isaiah said that the Spirit of God would be upon him. 
John also said, I will recognize him by the power of the Spirit. And here now, the Spirit of God descended on Jesus in the form of a dove, bodily form of a dove. Don't get this confused. The Spirit is not a dove. The Holy Spirit is not a dove. Even though we use a symbol to represent that, but here, notice the dove. And think of it, if you will, the heavens being rented. If we think of the heavens being rented and God coming down, you would think of mighty power, destruction coming down from heaven. But here, a calm, peaceful, humble dove. A dove one of the most gentle but, uh, birds there are. A gentle dove coming down and alighting on Jesus signified the Spirit of God. And a voice from heaven that God speaks. Just think of it now. Some 400 years there had been no voice from God. 400 years, and the people were anxiously waiting. That's why the prophet Isaiah would say, oh, that you would rent the heavens and come down and tear and destroy and do what is justice and bring justice upon the land. 400 years, God speaks. Yes, the angel came to Gabriel and to Mary and spoke, the angel came to Elizabeth, but now God speaks. God speaks from heaven. And John tell us, before we move from that, John tell us later on in St. John, he says, I saw it. It's not just a that door we read and say, well, the heavens open up. But John said, I saw it the heavens read it. I saw it. He said twice, I saw it, I saw it. And those around no doubt saw it also. And they heard the words of God say, this is my beloved son, and whom I will please. One of those references says, and listen to him. Hear him. Jesus says again, if who's ever hears me, hear Hear not the Father, hear not the Son. Jesus is not to him. But now what all of this means to us? We talk about the baptism of Jesus, and many of you know the baptism of Jesus. You read and what does it really mean to you? The Apostle Paul and trying to give us a, a greater understanding of the power of baptism what it all means to us. The connection here, because Jesus was baptized, because he went in the water there and took our sins, we are set free and we belong to him. We are children of God because of Jesus have removed our sin. He took our sin and gave us his righteousness. That's what we call justification. We were indeed in, but God have declared us right with God. And Paul says now again, it's more than that. Some of us are just trying to say, I was baptized such and such a time, and many of us don't even know when we were baptized. But I come to tell you, there is power and baptism. What does baptism does? It washes away our sin. Not a thing that we did once some years back here at the altar. God has put power in baptism that every time we come before him and kneel down and say, Lord, forgive me of all of my sins that I've done and thought word and deed. God washes away our sins. That's the power of baptism at work in us. It is a daily thing. We daily use that baptism of power. 
There's nothing we put on the shelf and leave but daily. And I pray that you will walk in your baptismal power day by day as we hear here the, in the words here that we will live in it. We are children of God. We belong to him. Listen to Paul comes and he, along and he says, not only that, but we are connected with God. It goes deeper than that to the point that we are buried with him. And because we are buried with him in baptism, buried with him in a death like his, we shall also be raised with him in a glorious resurrection like his. Oh, one day I'm looking forward to that glorious resurrection when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall get up and we too shall have a glorified body like that of Jesus. That's further, but not, it's more than that too. What does baptism does? It gives us power to endure this journey while we're here. Listen what the Old Testament lesson says here. Though you walk through the water and, and the fire, God will be with us. He will place his name upon us in baptism. And God says, wherever my name is, there I will be. We have the blessed assurance that God is with us. Whether we go through the fire, whether we go through the water, whatever trouble we go through, God is with us because I am a child of God. I belong to him from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. I belongs to him. Paul says we are connected and we are buried with him and we shall be raised with him. But listen to, and I pray that you would read again the Old Testament lesson. As you was listening, it says, God says what? You are mine. I love you. You are precious in my sight. I paid a great price for you. You belongs to me. Don't be deceived, my brothers and sisters, by Satan and the world. And he comes to tempt us and tell us nobody loves you. You you are nobody. We are children of God. We are sons and daughters of the King. We have an inheritance in Jesus Christ. He has given us eternal life. Not a thing in the past that we will receive, but the very moment that we believe in him, we have received eternal life. And it comes through our baptism. Now note also the power and the importance of baptism. God here, on his last journey, as he left these mundane shows, he gave a great command. Go then, all of you. You see, when we are baptized, we become an army. An army of God. Marching to carry out the command that God has given us. And the great command that he has given us, that you go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It is a task every day. That's your job. A command that you have received from Jesus. Every day you ought to be going to your family members. Is your child baptized? Have your child been baptized? Not just once, but all the time. Keep on until you know that that child is baptized. Now, let's put it very plainly for us to get the gist of it. If baptism then make us children of God and we are eyes, then who children are we? Who children are we? When we think of it in that light, we realize the urgency and the command that God has given us that we go and we baptize. I'm sure that I'm speaking to some right here today that have children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, and all who have not been baptized.
who have not been brought into the family of God. The greatest gift that you can give your children or anyone is to have them baptized. This morning in my school, someone asked the question, what is the greatest gift that you can give? Someone say, well, lay down your life. That's good. We will lay down our life for someone. But the greatest gift to give is to share Jesus with someone. You see, when you share Jesus, you are saving a life. Not only just that physical, but that spiritual also. And that is the greatest gift that we can give. And God has given us a gift, and he also encouraged us to share that gift with others. When we're so stubborn to obey his command, why are we so stubborn? as selfish and not share this great love with others around us. As God's people, we ought to be motivated every day, looking and searching, searching. Notice what you said about Jesus. He came to seek and to save, to seek, to look out, to look out the lost, to seek and to save those that are lost. And if we join in with him, then we too should be seeking those that are lost. This is the power that God has given us in baptism, and what a great power. Baptism make us children of God, and no one can snatch us away from that. Baptism does not save us. It is a means of grace by which God has placed here to bring us into a relationship with him. Church, let's hear again the command that God has given us. Through our baptism, he charges us to go. Through our baptism, he promised that I will never leave you. Through our baptism, he washes away our sins and cleanses us over and over again so that we can go for him. And no stain is too great that our baptism cannot wash away. Don't let Satan deceive us to say you have done too much, you, you've gone and all of that. No, God, baptism is able to wash away every stain, cleanse us so that we can live for him. Here again, God has given us a charge. Go then and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. God bless you. Amen.